Well, gents, it seems the whole of Britain is celebrating, but at what cost? It would seem every other line on the isle has been bankrupted. In our great fortune, it would seem that we stand alone on the grand scale of things. I stand ready to front my wealth to buy out the competition. If you gentlemen are ready and to stand with me and run this railroad, if the eyes have it, then this railroad great building shall... Aye. Aye. Very well, then. Let's build ourselves a railway, gents. Sodor, a small island off the Welsh coast, had many railways, but now only one ruled the trains. In the aftermath of the war, a gentleman of great wealth came forth and took over the island's several bankrupt short lines. New main lines connected the island's many towns, and the scramble to recoup their losses, the short lines had started to sell off their equipment either for scrap or to the great western who were trying to replenish their locomotive stock, which left the wealthy gentleman with only two locomotives to work an entire line, a custom-made E2 who had been built in one of the previous line's workshops, and an old southern railway's T9. The rolling stock, however, would not need replenished quickly. The E2's name was Thomas, and the T9 was called Edward. He had them numbered Thomas 1 and Edward 2, and even let them choose their liveries. These two were enough to get things started, but new engines were certainly needed. Four new engines were soon uh, purchased for the railway. An A3 who had been damaged and repaired at crew. The wealthy gentleman was surprised to see he came to the island looking more like a Midland engine than an A3, with a Midland-style cab and tender. He managed to have a Black 5 built as well. He also managed to buy two more custom-built engines. An Avonside class SS tank engine with extended tanks and a coal bunker and a mixed traffic engine. He was a cross between a, a Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway class 28 and a Glasgow and Southwestern Railway Austrian goods. The Black Five's name was Henry and he was dubbed number three. The A3 was Gordon, and he was made number four. The custom class 28's name was James, and he was made number 5. And the SS class, Percy, was made 6. The railway's main yard was at a town called Knapford, where the sheds were also kept. The new fleet of engines gathered together there, where the wealthy gentleman spoke to them. My name is Mr. Blackwell. I am the new owner. I know you all have come from far apart, and how this must all be quite a sort of shock. But I know you'll be happy here, away from the constrictions of mainland work on other railways. So welcome, lads, to Sodor and the Northwestern Railway. Mr. Blackwell was short, stout, and had quite a commanding persona about him. The engines liked him, but teased him about his stoutness, calling him the fat controller. Mr. Blackwell actually thought it quite funny, and has let the engines address him by that name since. The weeks went by, and the railway started to get back on its feet. The war recovery was slow, but I must say the Fat Controller's Railway was doing quite well for itself. The Sodor and Northwestern was doing just fine. Each of the engines were certainly unique in their own way. Thomas was quite kindly, and did quite like his job with Percy in the yards but he could be a devilish one, and often liked to play tricks and such on the other engines. Percy was shy, meek, and mild, but had the heart of an A4. Gordon was quite a strong character, and was very wise, but could be boastful, and sometimes did go above his station. Henry was strong as an ox, and he was a terrific worker, and could even match Gordon in speed. 
Edward was the oldest out of all of them, and was very wise indeed. Granted, he couldn't quite do as much as he used to, but that never stopped him from being a very persistent worker. James, on the other hand, was a little too proud of being custom-built. He would go on for hours about how unique he was and how splendid he looked in his shining scarlet red livery. But he worked hard and could nearly match Henry in strength. And despite his vanity, he did have a good heart and would often set aside his own well-being to help the others. The railway's first express freight was soon opened. It was called the Flying Kipper and hauled the fresh seafood goods from the Irish Channel to London's Aston. This was usually Henry's job, but James did step in for him every now and again. The Fat Controller even opened the railway's first express to the mainland, called the Wild Northwestern, which ran all the way to London, where it met up with the LNER at King's Cross Station. Gordon did so love the chance to work expresses once again, and to see his old friends on the LNER. And so, the Sodor and Northwestern Railway thrived, and out of the ashes of war, it came to be one of Britain's greatest railways. It was truly the beginning of an era. <laughs>